15 News at 6. Roaring engines and burning rubber, signs of racing you won't see in Fort Wayne, at least not anymore. Since Bear Field closed in 2019, Fort Wayne hasn't had a speedway. Wayne 15's Ethan Dolan joins us now to catch us up on the history of racing in Fort Wayne. That's right, racing in Fort Wayne is dead now. But over the past three months, we've been piecing together the story of one of the most historic tracks in the nation. And it just happened to be in Fort Wayne. Indiana's racing culture is undeniable, but few know about its rich history in Fort Wayne. The first thing you see is a flash of a car going by. Dan Heath has fond memories of the Fort Wayne Speedway. He went a few times as a child, and now he's written a book to help keep its legacy alive. You've probably actually driven on the Fort Wayne Speedway and didn't even know it. Well, at least the ground where the Speedway once sat from the 1920s until 1964. The big difference is the track raced here over 90 years ago was a lot more dangerous. Many drivers would say this is a scary track. It's a car eater. It's a killer track. There were nine uh, fatalities at the track. The danger came from the bank being so steep. I remember being there and seeing a car go off the end and out into 30. But when World War II hit, racing in the U.S. was banned. The shortages for the war effort, they needed to concentrate on supplying the troops rather than having auto racing at home. At the time, it was thought the last stock car race in the country might happen at the Fort Wayne Speedway. They purposely started the race late so that they would be the last speedway to stage an auto race before World War II. And that became another factor that made this a historic, legendary track. The track's significance would draw some of the biggest names in racing, like eventual NASCAR founder, Bill France. I wonder if this is the place where it germinated in Bill France's mind to build the Daytona International Speedway. Because after all, the Fort Wayne Speedway, for all practical purposes, was the first super speedway in the country. But its popularity waned. Drivers stopped coming. It was too dangerous, and Bayer Field had just opened. The Fort Wayne Speedway shut down. The land was sold in 1964, and three years later, the Washington Township Fire Department burned it down as a training exercise. What was once a home for speed and thrills was gone in 40 minutes. It was kind of a sentimental journey to go out there and watch that. There was a hush in the crowd when the, when the height of the flames were at its, the peak. It was like all their memories of the track were going up in smoke. They looked at it and they thought to themselves, well, this is really the end. This, this is where it, it ends. The end of an era, but not of the memories. As far as the, the history, our own history, we have to hold it. I mean, it, it, if it's lost, it's a terrible loss. That history lives on through photo collections and tales passed down through generations. That might be like the fish in the store. That, that fish you caught was this big and then suddenly got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I didn't care. But I do know the story about Cliff Setzer flying over the bank and landing on California Road and the guy stopping to help him. And they both looked at each other and said, how did you get here? The uh, scoring tower getting knocked over. That was a story that was talked about an awful lot. And the fact that the place was just so big and so fast and so bumpy and so scary. And there were a lot of good racers. They walked in and went, ah, no, nope, ain't going to do it. She's just too big, too scary. Once again, since the closing of Bear Field in 2019, racing is just about dead in Fort Wayne. However, you can do it at a slightly smaller scale. Today, where the Speedway once sat on Speedway Drive and Grandstand Way, there's a go-kart track that bears the name Fort Wayne Speedway. Ethan Dolan, Wayne 15 News. Local coverage you can count.